The Favaro flood sensor basically tells you if water is showing up in places where it's not supposed to be. It's this tiny little white puck that's in front of Monty and he absolutely hates it. This smart home gadget seems simple enough, but the question that I needed to answer for myself and Monty needed to answer is, well, how well does it work? Specifically, how sensitive is the water sensor? How sensitive is the tamper sensor? And can it work on uneven floors? And how well does the Fabaro flood sensor work with carpets? That's a big one for me. I'm basically gonna share with you all the answers that I've come up with for all those questions in this video. I'm also gonna talk about how I would use my sensor in my current home, as well as my previous homes where I lived in a condo. Now, in general, if you're looking for water Water detection. I think right as of right now, or as of maybe a couple months ago, this is the only thing on the market that is compatible with Apple Home, which kind of sucks, but kind of not since, well, you know, there's only one thing and if you don't like it, you don't get it. Now the price tag is 90 bucks and that's probably gonna be easier to swallow in terms of cost anyways. Um, when you consider that you know for sure if something's happening in your house rather than that friend who says they're showing up, but you're pretty sure they don't in terms of checking on your house. At Smart Home Reviews, A, Monty and I base all our reviews or the videos that we do in our own home. This is where we live, so this is where we're gonna use all our smart home gadgets. These Fidbaro sensors were actually a little harder to find and if you're planning on getting them, make sure you get the right versions as there are Apple Home versions and non-Apple Home versions. Why Fidbaro, why? Why would you do that? Now this is important to note because it does look like different versions allow for different integrations with Fidbaro products. Now, the Fidbaro flood sensor is quite small and light and generally nondescript. The marketing fluff says it's inspired by nature, so I guess, well, it looks like a droplet. I personally wouldn't put it in the middle of the room as suggested by some of Fabaro's marketing fluff. The flood sensor actually has three sensors, which includes the water sensor, a temper sen temperature sensor, and the tamper alert. And as a side note, it will float, which is, I guess, useful when your house floods. The unit is powered by a half AA battery, though there is an option to connect the unit to a constant power supply. The battery in the Fabaro flood sensor is supposed to last for two years, uh, which is actually long enough for me to actually forget that you, you have this unit. So that's kind of a good and a bad thing. Installation with Apple Home is just incredibly simple as you point and shoot the sticker and it installs into Apple Home. In terms of using automations with this smart home gadget, all you can do right now is use the uh, det flood detection. It doesn't let you use the temperature, which seems odd. Now on Fibaro's website, it does show you integrations with other Fibaro products, but I can't figure out how you'd be able to do that using Apple Home since, while well, those products are not Apple Home compatible. Again, silly. Now, the first question I had is how sensitive is the water sensor? The Fabaro flood sensor has three telescopic stands that detect water. The moment that one of them gets wet, the unit will give a warning sound and send an alert to your device. Now, I said at the beginning of the video, Monty absolutely hates this device because, well, poor buddy has to suffer through that very high pitched noise. And so that sound comes, occurs when it's being tampered with, as well as if it detects wetness, water, fluid. To figure out how sensitive the sensor is, we did several bathtubs tests with Monty supervising. Now to figure out if the unit only needed one lake to trigger, we spent several minutes trying to squirt water onto, the, onto one single lake using a tiny eyedropper. From what I can tell, the moment that the Fabaro flood sensor detects uh, water, it will just keep beeping until you remove it. There's no way to remotely turn it off. So if you're running multiple sensors in a house, that's probably gonna be useful because it will let you know um, which sensor is actually detecting water. To stop the unit from screaming, you basically just pick it up and put it back down, preferably in some place that's dry. So the next question is how, uh, how sensitive is the tamper uh, sensor on this Fabaro flood sensor? And you know, there's features and products that I just kinda, I don't think I would shake my head at this one, but this one really makes me think about why it's gonna be there. Like I can understand, you know, a cat pawing at it and you know, Monty won't have anything to do with this tiny white puck, he just, doesn't care. Regardless, I personally need to know how sensitive it is. And as you can tell in this video, I'm basically, I could basically move this entire sensor across the floor without setting it off. In fact, I could slowly move it across the grout gap on my tiled floor or lift it up very slowly. It only triggers when there's sudden movement, whether it be a small kick or being lifted up quickly. In your home app, the tamper sensor is a uh, detail that you can check out and it kind of resets after, I would say between 30 and 60 seconds after being tampered with. 
Third question I had about this product is, will it work on uneven floors? And the short answer is yes. Now, in order to figure this out, I placed a sensor on the 100-year-old concrete floor in my basement and spilled water on the ground around it. On the second spill, it looks like the water triggered on two of the telescopic stands. Now, there is an obvious limit to how uneven the floor can get, as anything greater than a couple of degrees will result in the stands being lifted off the floor, so it's not going to detect anything. But the legs are long enough to allow the unit to sit in the grout gaps in the tiled floors. Now, before I talk about how well this Fabaro sensor, like this is the temper sensor, like <laughs> it triggers it. Uh, I don't know. But <laughs> before I move on to the carpet stuff, if you are planning on getting any of your smart home gadgets, consider getting through my links as none of these companies have sponsored any of my videos. And so I go out, spend the time to use these products as well as review them. So using the links allow me, allows me to do more videos in the future, which is something I really enjoy doing. Now, how well does it work with carpet? Everything I've shown you up until this point has been tested on a flat, generally even surface. Now the house that I grew up in, we'll say between ages five and 12, I guess. Um, the basement flooded almost every single year and it never flooded from the area where like the water main was or the sewage uh, pipe was. It always flooded from this one corner that was carpeted. And so there was really no way for us to figure out that the basement was flooding until it was too late. And so, you know, if I could build a time machine and go back and install a bunch of these things, well, the question is, would, I, would it be worthwhile to do so? The short answer is not really. Why? Because the Fubaro sensor triggers on water contact. It needs a solid bead of water to hit one of the leads before the unit triggers. With carpet, that only happens when the carpet's completely soaked through. Now, I did two tests to come to this conclusion. I took a carpet sample and placed it on a flat surface and started to pour water along the edges of the carpet. Well, the carpet really didn't take to the water, so I ended up pouring the water directly onto the carpet sample. Now, in order to trigger the unit, I had to pour the water right beside the unit and really soak it. It actually took a couple of pours before there was enough water in the carpet for the Fabaro flood sensor to trigger. In total, um, in this video clip, I probably used about two liters of water. I used two, two orange water bottles for this test. In the second test, I took another carpet square, placed it in my bathtub, placed a sensor on top of it, and slowly filled my tub. And as you can see, the unit only triggers when the carpet is almost submerged. Now keep in mind that this is a carpet sample. There isn't any underlay, so my tub is probably going to need to fill up another half inch inch before the Fabaro flood sensor actually triggers. That's a lot of extra water um, in a room uh, before you get notified by the Fabaro flood sensor. So with that in mind, I'm not quite sure I would use this in a carpeted basement, um, mostly because by the time you get notified, there is gonna be like an inch of water, like your carpet's gonna be completely soaked through and you're gonna be in a lot of trouble if that's the case. Now, I will note that the Fabaro flood sensor does allow you to attach a wired probe to the unit. There are instructions for that, but there's nothing for it in the box. In fact, I'm not sure where I'd be able to buy the probes as shown in the marketing fluff. The manual just makes it sound like I could just use regular wires. I have no idea. So personally, with these restrictions in mind, how would I use this Fabaro flood sensor? This is gonna be most useful to me personally when I'm gone on vacation. Now I've got a newborn, so the likelihood of me leaving the home for days at a time is gonna be far and few between for the next while. But if I think back to my pre-baby years, I definitely have two sensors in my basement. I've already showed you where I would put it in the uh, water main area and sewage pipe area, but I also put one by the sump pump just in case. If I could only afford one, then I would just put it by the uh, water main and make sure that my sump pump worked. Now before I got married, I lived in a condo and there's two two bathrooms and I would probably get one for each bathroom because there's no way for me to turn the water off to my unit. So I just need, I would just need to know if there was water leaking in any one of my bathrooms. Now, funny side story is that I'd never had any problems with water leaking my bathrooms. There was a problem with my kitchen and it wasn't because I left the sink going, it was because one of the drainage ducts in the roof of the condo units that I was uh, living in for some odd reason didn't drain any of the water in this massive downpour. And so the water found the uh, easiest path to leave the roof through the holes through our uh, kitchen fan ventilation ducts. And so my kitchen flooded from the roof. So this Fabaro flood sensor wouldn't be very useful in that instance, the only time my condo got flooded. But that was a side story. Now, one of the things I'm trying to grapple with is how I would use the sensor on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm personally not paranoid enough to keep one near each toilet or tub, and I don't think there's enough shenanigans in my house that flooding is going to be an issue. I really can't think of any reason why I would want to put this like in the middle of the kitchen. I, I just, I have a hard time. I, I guess if you, 
If your home had uh, heated floors, though under the water heated floors, then maybe it'd be nice to have every once in a while someplace. Um, but you know, it's with this current setup that I have with Apple Home, I'm, again, I don't know when I would use this on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm just not paranoid enough to, I guess. Uh, so if you found this video useful, again, consider getting your stuff through my links as, well, Fabar definitely did not give this to me to review. I went and bought it myself. Um, this is the first time you're watching my videos. I do encourage you to click subscribe as I'm gonna do some more smart home stuff in the next while. Lots of stuff. I've bought a lot of stuff. I've been using a lot of stuff. Now it's time to make a lot of review videos. So uh, stay tuned. Right, buddy? Time to go to bed. Yeah, you really don't like this thing. All right. Tamper sensor. Oh, that's brutal. Oh, that's so brutal. I could... <laughs> oh, now it triggered. <laughs> brutal.